A regular expression is a sequence of characters that specify a search pattern in the text. Regular expressions are super useful when working with text data, and as text data is practically ubiquitous these days, learning a bit about regular expressions will be of immediate practical benefit. A classic problem that can be solved with regular expression is, given a big document or collection of documents, find all the email addresses in it. This regular expression solves the problem. Obviously, this looks incomprehensible, and even if you know a lot about regular expressions, they can take a while to decode. Regular expressions are incredibly dense. They pack a lot of meaning into very few characters. So in this short video, we're going to go over some of the fundamentals of regular expressions, but you're not going to be an expert by the end. You can think of regular expressions almost like a mini programming language. You probably didn't learn coding by having it explained to you. You only really understood it after a lot of practice. Regular expressions are similar. Like with programming, once you learn them, you can do complicated things super quickly and you wonder how you survived before, but it will take some time to get good. Just before we start, the logo on the left is the logo for GNU. I put it there because I like it, but also to evoke the command line utility grep. Grep is a very old piece of software developed by the famous computer scientist Ken Thompson in the 80s. Grep is a regular expression engine that reads regular expressions and returns matches. As usual, we're going to use Python. Python standard library has a regular expression module called re. Here is a minimal example of using regular expressions. It's not very interesting yet, but it illustrates some of the basics. First, we define some text. We're going to look for patterns in this sentence. This is where all the work happens. We run the search function in the re library. This scans the text and finds the first match. The first argument is the pattern to match. In this case, it's very simple. Match the string insect exactly. The second argument is where to look for matches. It returns a match object. A match object has a Boolean value of true if there is a match and false otherwise. Since the pattern insect is in the text, match is true and this line prints out. A similar function is re.match. Instead of searching the whole line, it only looks for matches starting from the beginning. Since the text does not begin with the pattern insect, the match object evaluates to false. If all regular expressions could do is match simple text patterns, then they wouldn't be of much use. To see their power, we have to learn a bit about their syntax. Here are some characters which have special meaning inside regular expressions. The first two characters are the carré, the little hat, and the dollar sign. These correspond to the start and the end of the text, respectively. The star character we saw in a previous video. It matches any character or sequence of characters, including no characters at all. The dot matches any single character except the new line, though we can change the settings to make it match a new line as well if we want. Pause and think about what this code is going to do. This is a thing you have to understand. The result is that this is the only match. In words, this is a pattern which says, look for things which start with a capital E, followed by anything, and end in the lowercase p. If you're currently feeling baffled, that feeling is normal. Like I said, regular expressions are like a whole new language. It will take a while before you're fluent. What do you think this will do? If you missed it, the difference is that we removed the dot before the star. The first thing to say is that they're not the same. The version without the dot actually just matches a string starting with the capital E that has any number of capital E's then a P at the end, which is not very useful. Subtle differences in regular expressions can make a big difference, and as you start to build your own, you'll make many, many errors like this. Let's go rapidly through some other special characters. The plus is like the star, except it requires at least one match. The question mark is like the star, but it stops after one successful match. We can specify exactly m matches, where m is a number, using the curly braces. If we want to find between m and n matches, we can put two numbers in the braces. The backslash is the escape character, meaning it's used if you want to match something like a plus sign in the text. It also begins all the special sequences, which we'll show in a minute. Finally, the square braces can be used to indicate a range of characters. One thing to point out, the caray character does double duty. It usually means to look for a match at the start, but elsewhere in the regular expression, most commonly inside square brackets, it is logical not. We'll see an example of this in a minute. Look at this code. We have a list of URLs and we want to extract the domain names. So something like www.bbc.co.uk. The functions we've used before, search and match, only told us if there was a match, not what it was. The final function returns a string that matches the pattern. You'll notice that we're not calling this as a method of re, which you can do if you want, but as a method of some other object called HTTP. Here we've compiled the regular expression and saved the output in the variable HTTP. If we're going to use the same pattern multiple times, this speeds up comparisons. This is the actual pattern. We'll break it down, but notice that I've made it a raw string. That's what the R before the quotation mark means. This isn't strictly necessary here, but if you wanted to do something like search for a new line character, then using standard strings might cause issues. So out of habit, I use raw strings to write regular expression patterns. So here's the regular expression. The first part just says that the string should start with the characters HTTP. The next part says that we need to match zero or one S characters. This is to capture both HTTP and HTTPS domains. Then we should look for a colon followed by two forward slashes. Now the square brackets let us list the characters to match. So we have written not a forward slash. So any character except a forward slash matches this pattern. Finally, we have the plus sign, meaning at least one of the preceding element. That is match at least one non forward slash character. The output of this is this. Stare at it until it makes sense. One ugly thing is that we still have the HTTP part at the beginning. 
If we modify the regular expression a bit, we can fix this. By putting brackets around part of the regular expression, we define a group. A regular expression can have as many groups as you like. Find all will match the whole pattern, but will only return the groups. With this modification, the following is returned. The last thing in our rapid introduction to regular expressions are special sequences. The backslash w matches any alphanumeric character, that is, letters or digits, but not punctuation. There are a lot of cases where we want to match only ASCII characters. We can either specify that as an argument to the re functions or explicitly list all the ASCII characters. Backslash capital W is every character which isn't alphanumeric. In general, capitalizing the special characters does the logical inverse of the lowercase version. Backslash D matches all the digits. Backslash S matches the whitespace characters. Backslash B is a word boundary. This matches the beginning and end of a word. Here's our last bit of code. We're using the sub function. This takes three arguments, the pattern to match, the thing to replace the pattern with, and the input text. The replacement can be a string, or if we want to do something more complicated, we can use a function. We'll come back to this after we analyze the regular expression. This one is a bit simpler. We're basically looking for lowercase ASCII text, sandwiched by white space, and immediately followed by a number. Back to the code. The replacement function is run on the match objects. So when the pattern is in the text, the match object is passed to this function. Here, it replaces the first group, the middle word, with the word English inside angle brackets, and then adds the second match group, that is the digit. This is the result. The simple examples you use to learn regular expressions can seem very contrived, like this one. However, regular expressions really are useful. Imagine you have a directory with a large number of files and you want to get the ones from a certain date range, or you have a dump of a big website and you want to find all the article names. There's a reason grep has been going strong for 40 years. If you want to quickly search for complex patterns in large text collections, you're going to want to use regular expressions.